good day and welcome back to my channel. So I have another unboxing for you today. This is a Soviet Army half track, a Zeiss 42. Um, I would attempt to read the Russian, but uh, my Russian is not smooth enough yet to get through that, so I'd myrtleize it. So for those, um, if there's anybody who happens to speak Russian, I, I'm not just I'm not going to embarrass myself. So. Um, we have a, one th it's a 135th scale kit from Eastern Express. So I've never seen a kit from these guys before. So I figured I'd go ahead and share that with you, with y'all. Um, I, I will preface it. I have popped this open because I wanted to look at something real quick that's inside the kit, but I do want to go ahead and do an unboxing for you so you can see what's in this box if you're interested. So if we look around the side, you have some, uh, information in Russian, English, and German. The kit number 35153. You've got some box art of some other offerings by them. And uh, it might be worth looking at if, uh, once you see what's inside this box, you know, and on the back there's nothing. So when you open this up, take a look at and see what we have. So these all came in a single plastic bag, um, which, like I said, I did kind of crack into that first. Um, you have plastic. You have tracks, you have tires, and there are three. And these are a plasticky tire, we'll talk about those. You have your transfer sheet, and you have your instructions. Your instructions were sitting on the bottom of the kit tossed in here. So the instructions are photocopy sheets. So these sheets are essentially photocopies of an instruction booklet, and you can tell just by looking at them that that's the case. Uh, the writing is in, well, most of the details are written in Cyrillic, although there are some, some English words in there, and then they pretty much describe their, their, their pictorial. If you look at the details in, so the The quality of the copy isn't ideal. I can't quite make out the numbers or if those are supposed to be numbers. We'll find out, you know, when you go to do it. It looks like they're supposed to be numbers, but you can only barely see. Um, there's your half track. It looks like it's a fairly nice bogey system. The whole thing goes together. Um, and then we'd go onto the space here. Your cab build is all kind of detailed there, then your truck bed, um, as well as, you know, you've got your screw up on the front, and then these final detail pieces here where the cab kind of comes together, your tracks go on, and then you've got um, ski pieces for the front as an option, as you can tell, and then nothing like that. So the instructions leave, so the instructions seem to leave a wee bit to, to be desired, although, um, you know, I don't know if, if that's going to be relevant or not, because the, you know, depending on the quality of the kit pieces. So let's take a look there. Uh, I'm going to pull out the, here are the wheels. These are the wheels and what we've got for the wheels. Um, they are a plastic, they're, they're basically a plastic, although they feel not quite plastic, so it may just be, um, the, the type of plastic they've made out. It's a little harder, a little crisper. It's definitely not rubber, but there's some nice detail on them. There's no um, sidewall markings, but it is uh, for a 1940s-ish um, vehicle. So you do have tracks. You've got some decent detail on the teeth of the treads. You have guide horns-ish. Um, you've really got no detail at all on the inside here, and, you know, they, they are rubber tracks, so they'll go together like so, you know, once you, once you put them on. Um, so they are, are rubber bandy, you know, I don't want to say they're rubber bandy, they're, they're, they're flimsy plastic, flexible plastic kind of stuff, they're not really deep, the, you know, whatever that, you know, 
type of stuff you get out of a dragon kit, but you know, they're tracks. So not ideal, not that it's no dragon kit, but it is um, something. So this is your transfer sheet. And let's take a look at that here. Um, the carrier film seems really thin. So it, it's it's wide, right? So it's it goes outside the target fairly well, but it looks to be fairly thin. So there's a lot of... And once we go to actually put that on, we'll see how challenging that is, but I kind of like those. Look at the clear plastic. The clear plastic is... Eh, um, not bad, not great. But you can kind of see there. A little bit there. It's a little bit foggy, I think, with a dip. I might clean that right up. Now on to this stuff and on to the plastic sprue. So, like I said, I had given a quick look at this stuff before and I was impressed. The detail is actually kind of nice. This plastic is kind of sharp. Um, you know, there's some sick marks here in the, there you've got your ejector pins there and your leaves on the backside of your leaf springs. Ejector pin marks over here on the underside of this stuff, but You've got some molded in surface detail to the front of that, which is nice. Um, it's not very flashy. So that's nice. There's a little bit of flash like right here and here. Yeah, as soon as I say it's not very flashy, I see some. But it's not bad, but the things are crisp. Like these lines right here, really sharp. That's... That's a little disappointing you see in, those, in the leaf springs. You've got that there. But if you flip around to the other side, you've got ejector pins. So a little bit of fix one way or another. This is the underside of the thing. So, I mean, really, if it matters, if you look at the, what looks to be the gauge box, or the, the instrument panel, it's kind of clean. I suppose this is going to be a little bit of a challenge to snip out. Um, should work. Not terrible. Okay. Um, this is the skis for the front. Again, sink marks there where you had those. Now, this is kind of nice. Um, your front grill part. Again, these are going to be on the bottom. Uh, sink mark right there to whatever that is. So, need to fill that in. These are nice and crisply done. So this isn't, you know, th this has got some really nice detail here, even though there's some other pieces of it that are providing some slight challenges. And then this one is the part with the truck bed. So you see these ejector pin marks there, but on the other side, Got some a little bit of nice molded in wood detail with no sink marks and nail heads. Little flash right there. So it looks like the parts that are on the outside are nice. This will have to get filled in a little bit and then fixed. But these are the pieces that are on the inside of the bed. This I assume is the downside of the bed. Um. No, I guess I can't whine too much. Well, I can whine, but I shouldn't really need to whine. So that's a very small part. These parts here. And they're fairly nicely done. I mean, they're going to be, I suspect they're going to be a little bit challenging to get out. But, you know, if you take your time, that's what they're, what we're going to have to do anyway. So this is the cabin. There's your, it's kind of nice, pretty nice detail on your radiator. Again, some nice small details and so they're sort of a little bit flashy the way these are made, but it looks like you've got a good side and a not-so-good side. Same thing here. And the good side's pretty good. You know, the, these details are actually really crisp and really nice. And there's part of your engine. Yeah. Sink mark there. But, yeah, and this looks like this is your... Wheel set. So there's your sprocket, wheels, 
rollers. So on the bright side, you know, that's there. You don't have to put all those little rollers together like in some of the ones. There's your bogey mark. So, yeah. So that looks like it's, you know, sort of half and half. You know, this half goes there, that half goes there. And you have two, you have a right and a left. Um, so it should be workable to figure out how to do that. The de again, the detail to the outside of it is nice. Um, this is going to be inside where the wheels are. You'll need to fill those. But that's it. This is this will be on the back side. But there you go. Um, so that's the Eastern Express Zeiss 42. Um, overall, <clears throat> you know, you can look and see how these these different parts of the thing will go together. Overall, I think the kit's pretty nice. Um, there are things that, as a model, <clears throat> excuse me, as a modeler, you'll need to spend some time doing and doing up. But um, I think the only part that concerns me more than anything would be the instructions. But I think it it's something that can be handled, and and certainly this is a very very affordable kit. I think it's like you know less than two shekels, um, so it was pretty nice as far as expense wise. Um, but it, uh, it's a different kit. It's a different subject. And if you find yourself interested in what an Eastern Express kit looks like, you know, it's, it's kind of on, on par with, um, it's definitely, I think it's nicer than some of the Revell stuff I've seen. I think it's cleaner. I think the, the molding is crisper. Um, though, you know, the biggest issue is sink marks, I think, more than anything else. So with that said, um, there you go. I hope uh, if you're interested or curious to see what one of these is and you have this on your um, on your uh, radar, you can see now what's in the box and hope this helps. So, again, I will bid you adieu and talk to you next time. Happy modeling.